Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. This is an Audacity tutorial for beginners. If you're creating an online radio show, podcast, radio imaging, or simply want to make your voice sound different, you must get hold of my Audacity presets. Head over to mrc.fm forward slash presets. Go and get them now at mrc.fm forward slash presets. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. It sound right, boy. Let's get started. Assuming you've downloaded it and it's free to do so, open source software that works on Mac, Windows, and even Linux, it's never been easier to get into editing your own audio. So when you launch the app, you'll get a screen that looks similar to the one that I've got on my screen right now. Lots of gray and a few controls. So let's demystify those controls now. First of all, before you even hit record, you want to check your project rate in the bottom left. 44100 is a good place to leave it at for recording audio. You can go higher, making your audio recording higher quality, or lower. I don't generally recommend that. You've also got timers down here to show you where you are in playback duration-wise. And then you've got these controls along the top. So let's take a look at these. First of all, before you start recording, you need to set up your audio device, whatever you're using to record. It might be something like the internal microphone on your MacBook Pro, although I hope you've got something a little bit better, or it might be a dedicated audio interface in my case. So you can choose different types. I'm on Windows, MME, I found to be the best for me, and I'm using a Focusrite USB audio interface plugged into my computer with this microphone plugged into the front of that. Simple as that for the setup. Then I can choose if I want it to be stereo or mono. In general, we're gonna stick with stereo here, a left and right channel recording, and then playback is coming via a different audio interface for me. It's my Rode audio interface. If that's all set up correctly, when you click these level meters here, you should get level as you talk. And that level will disappear when you stop talking. So you can check that your levels are okay. Generally, you should be going somewhere between minus 12 and minus six. You'll see this blue line shows the loudest I've ever gone. It's probably just a smidge above minus six, but I'm not too concerned about that because it's not going up here to zero or into the red. So I can disable that monitor and I can create my very first recording. And as you imagine, it's very easy to do so. Just hit this big red record button or hit the R key on your keyboard. This is my first ever recording in Audacity. I'm quite new to this, so I'm still trying to figure things out, but I think I am getting there. Okay, there we go. So I hit stop when I'd finished. You can also hit the space bar to stop recording. It's pretty simple. Now, if I want to play back, I can either hit the green play button here or the space bar. This is my first ever recording in Audacity. And there we go, there's my quality recording playing back uh, with levels coming back out of here. It's all looking good, it's all looking healthy. I can move on and figure things out. Now, something you might want to learn quite quickly is if you wanna focus in on something, you can select it like that. I've just done that, just taken my mouse and selected a piece of audio. Hit the space bar, but I think I am, and it plays that exactly, or this, getting there. And if I want to loop playback, a handy thing to know, it's shift and space bar, getting there, getting there, getting there. And if I want to go really crazy, I can highlight just a tiny bit. So you see, you can really loop things around and do all that stuff. Now, if I want to extend, I can take the hand and extend out my selection. This is a way just to select different parts of audio, play them back, preview. And as you can see down here, I've got my timer showing I'm three seconds into the clip over so here. I'm still trying to figure things I'm five out. seconds and so on and so on. I can move this along and see the time change down below. If I was to select something like this portion here, it would show me my start and end of selection. So it starts at 4.005 seconds and ends at 6.803. So a great way to know where you are in the whole area. Now, sometimes I want to zoom in and this is where I'll do my first tool change. I am generally working in the selection tool, which is F1 on my keyboard. F4 will take me to the zoom tool. So I can either click this here or hit F4 on my keyboard and I get a little magnifying glass. And now left mouse click will zoom me in, right mouse click will zoom me out. Really is as simple as that. Wherever I click on the waveform is where Audacity will zoom to. So really easy, I can zoom like that and then back to the selection tool here or F1 and I can really zoom in and sort of really get to where I want to be in my recording very, very quickly indeed. 
Make sure you like this video. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and ding the bell so you never miss another audio video from me. OK, so we got lots going on there. But how about getting some music in to go along with my vocals and mixing two different tracks together in Audacity? That is super simple. Uh, and I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to do it in a really simple way. I've actually got my Finder window opened up. Uh, well, it would be Finder if I was on Mac or Explorer window, I guess, on PC. And I've got some audio files. So I can go ahead and I can drag and drop an audio file from my Explorer window, which is on my second screen. And if I just drop it anywhere on Audacity, it loads up a second track. Look at that. And there is my music. So now I've got music and speech. This is the and of course, you'll hear the music is way too loud and the voice is way too quiet. So we can start to do uh, different things with this. We can either uh, solo just the voice and play that. This is my first notice the music grays out when I hit solo on the voice track. I can solo just the music. There we go. And it's playing back a selection. I can play back any selection. I can also do the inverse. I can mute the music track. This is my first ever and off it goes. Now, say I want to make this voice a little bit louder. Uh, there's a couple of ways I can do that. First of all, I could use this, the envelope tool, and I could actually go ahead and just zip, zip that up. It's probably the easiest way to do it. It's very visual as well. It works well. Make sure to switch back into your selection tool again. This is my first. OK, you can start to hear the voice a little bit more, but that music bed's awfully loud. Again, envelope tool, and I can bring this music bed down a bit if I want. This is my first ever. There we go. And if I want to undo something, I can hit Control or on a Mac, Command and Z. Boom. And I've just undone my last thing. Cool thing about the envelope tool is I can draw on two points and I can kind of fade down the music like this. Let's play back now. This is my first ever recording in Audacity. So you see how we're starting to get there with the kind of sound we want just by mixing two tracks together. Really, really easy to do so. There is another way you can duck down music and it works quite well. But before I do that, I'm going to solo my voice track and I'm going to add a bit of compression to it, which will level everything out, make it a lot clearer and it'll be easier to hear what's being said over the top of the music. To do this effects and we go for compressor. And of course, you need to select what you want to compress first. So I'm just going to select all of the speech like so. Or you can just double click that track to select everything. Effect, compressor. This is where it gets complex. Let's start with a really easy compressor. I'm going to go to a minus 20 threshold. Leave the noise floor. Ratio of 3 to 1. Attack time as fast as you can be. Release time is absolutely fine. Don't want to do too much. Going to apply that and look at how it levels out that voice quite nicely. Let's have a listen. This is my first ever recording in Audacity. I'm quite new to this, so I'm still trying to figure Now, if I wanted to move this around and bring this in when a beat comes in, let's play this back, this music bed here. Say I wanted the voice to start here. I can easily do that by selecting this tool here, which is the time shift tool or F5 to access it quickly. And then I can drag this speech so that it comes in at the start beat of that music bed. Unmute this. Let's play it back. See what we got. This is my first ever recording. And if I'm not quite happy, I can nudge it along a bit more. This is my first ever recording. Pretty cool, but I'm still having an issue with that music bed. Now, of course, I can use that envelope tool just to turn the bed down a little bit, however I want. Um, or yeah, let's let's actually leave it just as is because I'm going to show you another feature. But for this, I need to drag and drop. By the way, you can drag and drop these uh, tracks around like that just by grabbing a track and dragging and dropping. For this example, the music needs to be on top of the voice because I'm going to use a really cool effect called auto duck. Now, take a look at what happens here. Leave it as is default settings and boom, it automatically ducks when it recognizes dialogue. Let's play it back. This is my first ever wow. recording in Audacity. And if I want to change that auto duck effects, auto duck, I can make it so the fade is a lot smoother and slower. And maybe this goes down a little bit more in amplitude. Click OK. Just change the shape. Look at how it nicely fades down and fades up. Let's play that. This is my first ever recording in Audacity. Sounding good. I'm quite new to this, so I'm still trying to figure things out. But I think I am getting there.
and face the music bed back up. So as you can see, really easy stuff to get to grips with. Audacity is a really simple tool. And if you're a complete beginner, you should now know how to set it up, how to get your audio in, how to record it, how to play it back, how to highlight parts, how to add simple effects like a compressor, how to move things around, how to change volumes, how to zoom in and out. Oh, but there's one last thing. You've made a fantastic project and you want to save this. You want to save it out uh, and maybe come back to it at a later date or upload it as a podcast, for instance. A couple of different ways you can save. If you want to come back to this as a project, so that means all the audio you've recorded on separate tracks, you want to save it as an Audacity project. File and save project and then save project. Okay, now. It's not an audio file, and this is what this dialog box warns you. It is a project file, okay? Combination of all your audio files together. Click OK, and you can save it. You can give it a name. You can call it Mike, and it saves with the extension .aup3, which will only be, you'll only be able to open this in Audacity, nothing else. So it means you can come back, rejiggle this stuff, re-edit, change things uh, at a later date. So that's worth to remember. So that's the first thing you can do. And I recommend doing it, particularly if you're working on a complex podcast or something like that. But if you want to get a final mix down of all these files as one final audio file that you can upload somewhere, like for instance, a podcast or online piece of audio, you'll want to go to File and Export. And this is where you can choose different file types many different types. MP3 is good for podcasts. You've got WAV, which is lossless. So if you want the highest quality possible, select WAV. OGG, OG, that's a very good open source uh, audio file. And those are the main files you're going to want. I'm going to go for WAV because that is lossless and I can always come back to it. And then you can give it another name, Mike, and that'll be Mike.wav. And that means that I can play that on any other computer, any other device. I can even upload it to the internet and someone can download it and play it back. So that is the way you save. Two different ways in Audacity. One way to come back and rejiggle the project. Another way when it's your final mix. I really hope that this tutorial helps you to get started. If it still leaves a few more questions in your mind after watching all of this, do let me know what I can answer in the future on my channel in the comments down below. Check out my Audacity Ultimate Course for Beginners. If you are a podcaster, YouTuber, voiceover artist, or audio editor, you need this course. Head over to mrc.fm slash audacity. That is mrc.fm slash audacity. Thumbs up. Subscribe for more. Music Radio Creative.com